In this lesson, we'll learn some of the benefits of shooting as a raw image. All right, so here I have two images, and these are exactly the same, with the only difference being that this one here on the right is a JPEG image, and this one over here on the left is a raw image, and I've just colored them yellow and blue, so that way we know which one is which really, really easily. Now, I haven't done any editing to these images, but right away you can see that there are some very minor differences. So over here on the JPEG, if you look at the sky, you can see that this is a little bit brighter than the raw image. And even in the sunset, you can see that it's a little bit brighter here in the center than it is over here in the raw. And to be completely honest, as it is right now, I actually like the JPEG a little bit more, at least as it is right now. So if I like the JPEG, why is it so important to shoot in RAW then? Well, if you're serious about photography, it really comes down to something that you'll find a lot when you're working with photography, and that is flexibility. So I'm going to select these two, and let's hop into a compare view here. So we have our RAW on the left and the JPEG on the right, Yep, yellow and blue. And let's make sure that auto sync is turned on. So now if I come in and start to uh, change my exposure, let's say maybe I want to bring it down a little bit. There we go. You can see what's happening. So here in the JPEG, I'm getting this banding going on in the, um, in the sunset here that I'm not getting in the raw image. Now this is happening because of a fundamental difference in the JPEG image that the raw image does not have, and that is a limitation in the amount of colors that are in the JPEG image. So while it looks great when we first take the picture, once we start to process it, we can start to hit that limit of the colors. And especially when you're seeing something like a gradient, like we have in this sunset here, you're going to start to um, really get unwanted results. As you can see, we've got this banding going on here that really doesn't look very good, um, as opposed to the sunset over here. Now, there's another limitation of JPEG images. So if I bring back my exposure, let's bump this up quite a bit. And normally, I would want to maybe mask out the sky so we can get the ground, uh, maybe not blow out the sky when we get pull back a lot of the color from the ground here. But if I zoom in, just to illustrate this, you can see the difference. So you can see in the JPEG, not only are we getting a lot of the grain that, yeah, we have in the raw image because it is so dark, but we're actually getting a lot of compression artifacts as well. You can see it just looks, uh, it looks very compressed, this digital compression going on. And that's because the JPEG file format is by definition a form of compression, whereas a raw image can be uncompressed. Once again, it's going back to basically there's more information in the raw image. And so once we start to actually process this, in the raw, we'll be able to process it and get better results much more than we will a JPEG image. And because photography relies so heavily on capturing a once in a lifetime moment, the more options that you can give yourself for post processing the image later on, the better off you'll be. Now, JPEG images do have a benefit in that they are pretty much a universal standard or pretty much anything can open a JPEG image. And that makes them great to share, to preview, to be able to have on hand. Whereas a raw image, you're going to need to bring it into something like Photoshop or Lightroom in order to process it. So JPEG images do have a benefit. So my recommendation is to actually shoot in raw plus JPEG mode. Most cameras these days that can shoot a raw image will also allow you to shoot in a JPEG mode. So let's take a look at what that would look like on a couple different cameras. So this is a Canon uh, Rebel T3. So you can see if I hop open or pop open the quality menu here, this is actually taking a JPEG. So any of these would be taking a JPEG image, right? These are just different sizes of the JPEG that we would want to take. And this is what it looks like on uh, Sony. This is a Sony A7S. You can see that it's a little bit different. So depending on what camera you have, the make, the model, um, the brand, it might be a little bit different. 
That's why I'm kind of showing a couple different uh, variations here. Now this is for raw. It's pretty self-explanatory there. And then the raw on the A7S. And you can probably see by now the raw plus L is raw plus JPEG. And then on the Sony, it's the raw plus JPEG here. So next time you're out shooting, try switching to RAW or RAW plus JPEG and see how much more processing you can do with your RAW images. Now, the one downside to RAW plus JPEG is that it does take up more space because, of course, it is taking two pictures instead of just one. Uh, so just make sure to bring a few extra uh, memory cards with you while you're on your shoot. Now, there's one last thing I want to point out here. So if I hop back into Lightroom, if you do take pictures with RAW plus JPEG, in Lightroom, if you come up to Edit and Preferences, there's an option on the import to treat the JPEG files next to RAW as their own separate photos. And that's going to allow you to get um, both of them imported like this, side by side, as opposed to um, Lightroom just trying to import the raw images and pretty much ignore the JPEG images. All right, so in this lesson, we saw how raw images allow us more flexibility when we're processing our photos than JPEG images. Now, if you want to know some of the technical details behind why there's this difference between raw and JPEG images, check out the next lesson.